the guys just talked about it, that some of the most meaningful fights in the sport they aren't necessarily the world title shots or the launching pad opportunities. Fights when you've already been to the top, you fall down a rung when a fighter is veteran enough to realize the truths of what a loss will bring. Nick Lapierre, Jose Pedraza, they understand that with this matchup. There's slick Nick Lapierre. Two weeks ago, the fight was canceled with a positive COVID test of his manager. Found out morning up, day of the fight, Mick said, I cried that morning. But he understood it was out of his control. Let's look at the Geico tail of the tape and focus in on the power punch connect percentage as both guys are slightly above the junior welterweight average. Of course, Petraza, a long time junior lightweight and then lightweight where he had titles. And here is Jose. Guy who's always smiling outside of moments like this, now masked up as he goes to the ring. Soldier would not come out to any music for his ring walk with the loss of the family's grandmother, Louis Espado, his trainer's stepdad's mother passed away this week. So he did not want to come out to music for this fight. Great family man, very thoughtful guy. His wife, Millie, three kids in Puerto Rico, and Louis Espada. His stepfather as his trainer. We are ready for our junior welterweight main event. Here's Mark Chino. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back inside the MGM Grand Conference Center in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This is boxing presented by Bob Arum's top rank. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the junior welterweight division. Judges at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Dave Moretti, and Patricia Morse-Jarman. The man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Kenny Bayless. This is boxing, this is top rank, and this is the main event. Fighting out of the blue corner, presented in association with Debella Entertainment. He weighed in at 143 and a half pounds, wearing black trunks with white trim, he has a record of 22 wins, one loss, one draw, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. He is a former world title challenger from Brooklyn, New York, Mikhail Slick Mick Lapierre. <laughs> Fighting out of the red corner, he weighed in at 143.9 pounds, wearing brown trunks with white and red trim. He brings a record of 26 wins, three losses, 13 wins by way of knockout. He is the former lightweight world champion, former junior lightweight world champion from Sidra, Puerto Rico, Jose Sniper Pedraza. Good, 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 gentlemen. Trunks are good on both sides. Fellas, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to caution you to keep this fight clean at all times. Protect yourself at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck. Touch him up. Stanless atmosphere, of course, in the COVID-19 protected bubble there at the MGM Grand Conference Center. But that doesn't mean your voice can't be heard. You can go to ESPN.HearMeCheer.com to participate with your voice as a fan for this Main event live from Vegas. Dre Jose Pedraza said, in terms of taking this fight, the two week turnaround, the catch weight now higher at 144. Yeah, it can be considered a risk, but he thinks he will adapt well to the weight. Feels late here is strong, but he said, I'm faster, and you combine that with my skill and agility, and that will be the key to victory. I agree, Joe, that that should be the case. You're, you're looking at a fighter in Jose Pedraza, who's fought 67 world championship rounds. Le Pierre's only fought 12. And Pedraza has a lot more experience than Le Pierre, taking nothing away from Le Pierre. But Pedraza, if he wants to 
keep his title shot alive and his name at the forefront of the sport. He's got to not only win tonight, but be impressive. So Tim Dre brings up the experience edge for Pedraza at the highest level. The 12 rounds that he references for Le Pierre, that is when he fought Maurice Hooker, March of 2019 for the WBC Junior Welterweight belt and he was rocked and cut in the fifth round he was knocked down the left hook in the ninth round wide margins for the unanimous decision win for hooker that night yeah but he gained experience from that late here you know and he's taking that experience that he gained in that fight into him right now Uppercut left hand from Pedraza. I love the punch, the punch choices, the punch selection coming from Pedraza. He's coming from different angles. He's confusing LaPierre in there. And LaPierre is, is a hard guy to hit. You know, he's very he's a slick fighter. You know, he loses his head often. But then we see right there, Pierre pushes off and attacks and comes forward, trying to close the distance. Work rate from Pedraza here in round number one. Natural right-hander who, as you see, switches constantly. Pedraza's doing the right thing. He's coming out. He's letting Lay Pierre know that I'm the boss. I'm the guy with more experience, and you're a good fighter, but I'm a better fighter. And that's the kind of presence you want to have if you're Jose Pedraza in this first round. See blood coming from the nose of Le Pierre. Decision win against Mark Bernaldez just moments ago. He's now 17 and 0. Meanwhile, in that first round, Tim, Jose Pedraza landed 11 power punches against Nick Lapierre. Yeah, with the variation of the punches, the punch selection that we're not talking about. And here you see Pedraza comes around with the right hook right there inside the pocket. But then you see him weaving, get his head back off the line, which confused Lapierre. And then it caught him with a couple of more combinations right here in that sequence. Great work, great offense. Great creativity from Jose Pedraza. Talked about the extra weight that Pedraza has to deal with in Le Pierre, and to me, Jose Pedraza looks like the bigger man right now. He's coming for that. Come on, man. He's coming. He's coming. Oh! See, a lot of people don't understand that movement of Pedraza and what he's doing. You know, he's making himself hard to be timed. You know, it's hard for Le Pierre to time in the shots. And then when Le Pierre sits right there in front, what do you see? Pedraza now working combination to the head. Look at Le Pierre covering up, and Pedraza's just letting him fly. Hayless has to to keep a close eye. I know he's blocking some of those, but some of those shots are getting through. Absolutely some of them are. Puts up the earmuffs, and Pedraza says, that's fine. I'll press the accelerator. No problem with that. And there's another cut that lands. The answer at all is a concern. Pedraza lands a thudding uppercut. Pedraza's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. I said it in the beginning, taking nothing from Le Pierre, but you have to look at his record, you have to look at his experience, and you have to treat him as such. Good shot right there from Pedraza. You can't allow a person like Le Pierre, a fighter like Le Pierre, to gain confidence. If I hear that you're working a day job and going to the gym at night, I gotta treat you like, you, you know, you're, you're boxing in the evening and working during the day. Yeah, I gotta treat you just like this. And that's what Pedraza's doing right now. Come on. here now. Trying to make some way. Push off and create some offense of his own here at the end of round number two. Yeah, Pedraza might have punched himself a little bit out this round. He threw a lot of combinations. 
We'll update those copy box numbers when we come back. Active round two from Jose Pedraza. Good stuff. It was a rapid fire assault in round number two from Jose Pedraza. Talked about Pedraza setting the tone. I think I counted somewhere between 30, 35 shots to the body, to the head. I'm concerned that Lacey here felt like it was okay to sit on the ropes and take that kind of punishment. Not every shot landed, but plenty of them did. And Kenny Bayless was very, very close to stop him. You know, and Kenny Bayless made the comment just before the start of this third round to Mick Lake here. He's like, listen, you got to show me something at moments like that. I, it's my job to protect you. But in that second round, look at the punches for Pedraza. He was 46 of 83, 55 percent, 43 of 67 on power punches. That's just in the second round. Let's check in with Bernardo and hear what they're saying in the corner of Slick Mick. <laughs> right before Kenny Bayless told Mick Lapierre to show him something, Joan Guzman said the same thing, and Lapierre told him, look, he hurt me to the body. And he says, look, you can beat this guy, but you got to show me something. Joan Guzman is the trainer of Lapierre. Of course, Guzman, former junior featherweight and junior lightweight world champion. You know, when Pedraza landed those combinations, and you didn't see anything coming back from him, from Lake Pierre. You know, Russell, he could have stepped in there and stopped that action a long time ago. He could have stepped in there. It was probably about 35 seconds of no return fire from Lake Pierre. Here, Jose Pedraza, he want to test the tank of Lake Pierre again. He had a great round. I know he probably has to get his win back under him and recover. But fighters speak loud. The body language speaks loud. And there's a reason Lake Pierre wasn't throwing punches back. And he's got to go see what that reason is and go test him once again. Well, you can tell the stomach of, of Lake Pierre it doesn't look like it's in tip-top shape. You know, I don't see any ridges in his stomach. If I'm Pedraza, that's where I'm going. I'm going down to the body. Forget about the head. I'm going to hit the body. If you're late, Pierre, you got hit with a good body shot in the previous round. You got to try to recover and get yourself back in this fight. It's still early. Left hand that scored. Got hurt with that shot. Combination that comes in. He got hurt with that. He did. End of three, Pedraza in control. Another high percentage of power punches landed in that last round for Jose Pedraza. And Timmy, he got to Lay Pierre late with the left hand. Yes, Pedraza keeps landing shots like that. Look at how he just made the jab miss of Lay Pierre and came right to the top with the straight left hand and bunched him. Saw the stanky legs right there from Lay Pierre. You know, if he continues to land shots like this in this round, this fight is going to be over real soon. Trust me. Talked about Pedraza at the top of the show, showing some slippage in his last couple of fights. He's not showing any slippage right now. He's showing vintage Jose Pedraza, the one that helped him win the two world titles in two different weight classes. His Achilles heel has been inconsistent. He's been inconsistent in the past. That's not the case tonight. Change it. The problem for Le Pierre is he's not only been hurt to the body now, as we just saw in their replay, he's now getting hurt to the head. You said, Dre, you know, that Pedraza has that willingness, you know, you got to understand people that you got to... You gotta go to a, to a pretty much a dark place when you're in that ring. You know, you gotta you gotta feel like you're invincible. You gotta feel like you're the man. And, and if there's any time that you don't feel that way, you get into a fight, you're not gonna perform at your best. And I think that's Pedraza. And I believe that Pedraza at this moment believes that he's a great fighter and he's fighting like it tonight. Oh, 
I think his stepfather and trainer, Luis Espada, as well as Pedraza, they've been around the game in the amateurs a long time. They've been in the pro game a long time. They know that they don't have a lot of chances to stay in this place where they're right in line for a title shot. So they knew they had to come in here and perform tonight. And he's been off for a long time. Lots of cancellations. The coronavirus is making the most of this performance tonight. But to me, right at this moment, he seems like Pedraza's letting Napier up off the hook a little bit. You know, he's moving his head very well, but he's not making making Pierre pay with those shots. You make a fighter miss, you got to try to make a pay. Hey, oh my God. Come on, come on. That's right. Very solid night for Jose Pedraza, 31 year old, former two division world champion. Lost the lightweight unification fight to Vasily Lomachenko. Now five years late here. A 19 to 31 connected damage at this point for Pedraza. The dominating second round remained at 43 power punches when Lee Pierre covered up and absorbed punishment. Check in with Bernardo. Luis Espada told me, look, he's got to use his boxing because. Le Pierre is the bigger and stronger guy in there. I want him to continue to use his range, win round by round, and he's just got to watch out for one thing, Le Pierre's left. He does have to watch out for Le Pierre's left. And you can see Le Pierre trying to set it up. You know, he went to the head with the left, but you also can turn it up the middle. And as Pedraza is moving forward, you see him drop down to the body right there. He's available. He just knocked him down. That's a knockdown score. Four. Five. So Le Pierre six, scores the knockdown. Might have been a little bit off balance, squared up, and got caught in the process. But the uppercut is available for late year. It was awkward there on that exchange, but the knockdown rule. Looked like Pedraza was off balance. If you're late, Pierre, obviously things haven't gone your way early in this fight, but this is the time. Good shot. And they reverse order as Pedraza turns the tables and scores a knockdown of his own. Seven. Eight. Okay. So they trade knockdowns here in round five. Now Pedraza stalking. Play here, tying up. Pedraza's got to try to get another shot at him before this bear wins. Play here, doing a good job with the right hand, clearing his head. Nice tie-up right there by the vet, Lake Pierre. Trying up again, trying to get through these last 10 seconds here of round five. Just missing with the right hand. He played by our crew there, showing you the first ruled knockdown of Lake Pierre. Clearly hidden form by the assistant commissioner. And then Kenny Bayless goes to each corner and says, listen, that was a trip. Le Pierre is not getting credit for the knockdown there. That was a trip. And to answer your question, Timmy, you said it. At any moment, it's at the sole discretion of the referee if they want to confirm or overturn any initial call. They want to get it right. They watched our replay. They watch our program monitor very closely. They said, hey, ESPN showing you that it's a trip. We feel it's a trip. 
And then Robert Bird is the replay official assigned, the veteran referee Robert Bird. Bayless comes down to Bird. They watch it together. They consult. They come to a conclusion. And that's what Kenny Davis wanted to do. And he was able to overturn his original call of a knockdown, ruling it a trick. Bernardo. In the absence of executive director Bob Bennett, it was Jeff Mullen, the assistant executive director, who explained to me that under the Nevada State Athletic Commission regulations, they can't stop the action in order to make sure that it was a trip, they did see the replay, and more importantly, to make sure that they changed the scorecard accordingly before proceeding. I like the replay, I just don't like the timing of it. I understand if it's a referee is checking the replay during the rest period and it bleeds over into another round, but to allow the rest period, the full minute, to run its course and then to stop the action, I just don't like that part. Well, listen, Pedraza had LaPierre hurt, Dre, right? And if you come to exactly. the exact fifth round, advantage Pedraza with the big right hand and then the stalking attack right to the bell against LaPierre, who tied up multiple times down the stretch of that fifth round. So it does give a break to LaPierre, even though it takes away the knockdown scored, he's able to regain his composure. I've seen the ringside judge consult with the, the, the ringside referee who's in charge of the video consult with the referee that's in the ring in between rounds. I've just never seen the referee get out of the ring like that. And everybody named Bird, Bayless, they're all veterans. Great, great rest. I've just never seen that happen before. It's part of the rules, Dave. It's part of the rules. They can do that. They have the authority to do that. And I don't mind it at all because you got to get it right. Because, you know, it can change the tide of the fight, honestly. If you're on the receiving end of a knockdown and you felt in your heart that you didn't get knocked down, that it was a cheap shot or whatever it was. Reminder that once we wrap up from Vegas, it'll be Scott Van Pelt on Sports Center bringing you the full day of news, including the NBA stars returning to a report from inside the bubble. Everybody's got a bubble nowadays, guys. We're the first bubble. Everybody's got a bubble nowadays. Plus, Tony Clark on what's going on with the tension between Major League Baseball and Players Association in day one of the PGA Rocket Mortgage Classic. That is coming up with SVP on Sports Center once we finish up with our main event here on Top Rank Boxing. And of course, we will be back with you after. Hope everybody has a happy and safe 4th of July. We'll be back with you for Tuesday and Thursday of next week. Jose Zepeda will be in action. He got the best of Jose Pedraza last year. And then we will have the undefeated American heavyweight prospect Jared Anderson next Thursday. Bernardo, what are they saying in the corner of play, Pierre? Yoan Guzman, the former world champion, said he's got a second shot after this opportunity that the commission gave him to take a rest, but he's not listening to me. I told him, you, we worked on that left uppercut all camp. You've got to use your range, and he's not doing any of that. That type of break mid-fight or at the start of a, a new round is not only can not only let a fighter off the hook if one fighter has momentum, but it's all, it also causes the fighters to cool down. And that's one of the worst things for a fighter is to be warm, to have the engine revving, and then to abruptly stop the car and allow the body to idle and then have to get rewarmed up. And that's what you see right now from these fighters. They're trying to get themselves back in the ladder. It's like you dancing on the dance floor and then all of a sudden somebody abruptly turns the music off for, for five minutes and then tells you, hey, start dancing just like you was before we turn the music off. It's difficult. You gotta warm up. <laughs> Andre, you better be catching your rhythm by yourself with no music, man, and stay loose and stay warmed up.
Come on, man. Shoot, come on, man. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, Dre. I understand, but, you, you know, one guy didn't get the rest. Both these guys got rest. And I understand that one guy might have had an advantage. But, like I said, I would rather have it, have it right and be called not a knockdown than to be called a knockdown. I'm willing to deal with that. I want you to look at the total punches as we start this eighth round. Pedraza has a 127 to 51 connect advantage. But when you look at the percentage landed, he's landing 43%. Late Pierre's only landing 16%. You know, Tess would always say about that that percentage, especially power punches. The closer you get to 50, that smells a knockout. He's at 54% power punches. He's landed 98 of 181 Pedraza. To your point, Tim, earlier, both fighters had a rest period whether they wanted it or not. And Pedraza can't use that as an excuse to not keep his foot on the gas and keep pressing the way that he was. And Le Pierre, he needs to look. He needs to look at the rest period as an opportunity to try to land a big shot. Because he's not winning rounds right now. No, not at all. And any time that Pedraza steps on the gas and actually let his hands go, he connects. But Jaja just needs to be more, he needs to get more consistent with his work. You know, there's too many lows in his work. Beautiful counter right. But the problem is just only one punch. You hit him with one, you hit him with one piece, go ahead and hit him with two, and then three, then four. Let those hands go. Nick Le Pierre has ability, fellas. He just was never able to get started tonight. Jose Pedraza jumped from the first round, and he hasn't let up since. The Dodgers have been very smart, just picking his shots wisely. You know, he's not rushing anything. He's taking his time, and he's allowing Le Pierre to work, and then he's trying, he's trying to counter. ESPN, most likely in August. This is a top-heavy division with two stars, including number one, Jose Ramirez, sitting on top. It's not only top-heavy, Joe, but it, it, it's heavy in that top ten. I don't see anything easy. I don't see any easy work in that top ten in that 140-pound division. No, Ivan Baranchek is number seven as well. So, I mean, listen, it's a great division. It really is, and it'll be fascinating to see how things play out with Ramirez and with Josh Taylor if we can have an undisputed champion at 140 pounds. Of course, we had that with Terrence Bud Crawford before he migrated more to 147. There's a lot of talent, a lot of hit talent in the 140 pound division. You know, Zapata's one of them. You got Mario Barrios as well. You got Arnold Barboza as well. You know, we don't talk about often. But he's also another top 140 pounder. Hey, Pierre hasn't shown the skill and ability to pull away from Pedraza, but he's definitely definitely showed a lot of heart tonight. Yeah, let's open the momentum. Hey, please. Well, I'm I'm sure sure a good punishment he took early on. 
Yeah, that second round he took a lot of punishment, then he was hurt with a big left hand in the third round. He was hurt with a big right hand in the fifth round. When Pedraza came back after what was initially ruled a knockdown score by Le Pierre in Nevada State. Athletic Commission took the time to utilize replay and said it was a trip, so that was overturned. Very easy as a fighter. When you have a day job like Le Pierre does, and you're getting hit with shots like that, and have been from the beginning, you got hurt to the body, you're bleeding out of the eye and the nose, to all of a sudden find something wrong, an elbow, a knee, my back. He didn't take that out tonight, and I respect him for that. Pedraza has Le Pierre right where he wants him, but then he backs up. You know, if he puts together a series of combinations, and he stay consistent with his attack, he probably can stop him. Pedraza is returning to the form that we saw from him early in the fight. He's pressing, not allowing Lapierre to think or rest. And you see all the damage that Pedraza has done on the face of Lapierre right now. Kenny Bayless said, hey, I have the right to do this. These are the review procedures that we have within the Nevada State Athletic Commission. And it was overturned. He said that was a trip. That was not a knockdown. Now, Dre, the problem you had with it is that it took touch up, two touch minutes up, and up. ten seconds on, to do that. From the time that he said, time, hold on, guys, we're not fighting, until he came back and said it was a trip and we're re-engaged, was two minutes and ten seconds. And to you, that goes against the grain of a basic pillar and tenet of the sport, is that we fight for three minutes, you get a 60-second rest, we fight for three minutes, and you have to withstand that and endure that. Right, I, I just don't like the timing of it. Um, Kenny Bayless did a great job of, of, you know, wanting to look at it again and overturning it because he, he called it a knockdown, so he corrected himself. Good hand from Pedraza. Knockdown scored here in the 10th. Seven, eight. Okay, coming in. But it's his momentum coming forward, and I believe it's a jab hand of Pedraza. Remember the last time he covered up, he got the rapid-fire assault. Let's see if Pedraza can close the show as he winds up with a body shot with the right hand. And covering up and off balance, here comes Pedraza, ready to close the show. Former two-division world champion, seeing if he can get rid of Le Pierre here in the 10th round. Another big shot, Lewis Bates is going to stop this. There's a right hand that snaps back the neck. Bayless is giving this a good look. He does not like the way Blake Pierre looks. Can he show him anything at all? Jab snaps back the head. Pedraza right there in close range. Another right hand comes in. Blake Pierre can't tie up. Right hand to the body. Pedraza looking for that right hand over the top. Let's see if he can find it. Stop. If he takes it downstairs, he'll be able to set it up. But you gotta, you gotta disguise it. Take it downstairs first. He heard you, Tim. There it is. And then he banged right up the top of my head. Good shot. Look at Lake Pierre fighting back, though, man. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, got yeah, I'm heart. telling you, man. He does have heart. Guy who was helping on the front line of COVID-19 efforts back home in New York. Came out here to fight, got sent back home with a positive test to a manager, so the fight was delayed two weeks. Came back out, took time out for work. He's absorbed a lot of punishment tonight, but he's going to try to take it right to the wire and go the full distance with Pedraza. After being knocked down in the fifth, knocked down here in the tenth. Stop, stop, stop. No, Lake Pierre was tough enough to go the distance, but Pedraza was far too much for him tonight. Take you back and show you how he arrived at this point. 
and early on he was placing the power punches throughout in the second round in fact he landed 43 power punches a huge offensive assault and round number five this was the moment that went to review as Mick Lapierre scored what was initially ruled a knockdown they said no it was a trip but Pedraza answered in that round with a big right hand himself. Time, time. Neutral. Neutral. So Kenny Bayless went to the replay official, Robert Bird, and they would take a look. And then he would go inform the judges as well as the two corners that indeed it was a trip. There was no denying what this was as Pedraza tagged Lapierre, put him on his back end. Lapierre was tying up numerous times down the stretch of the fifth round just to get through it. And then what we just saw in the tenth round, Pedraza scoring with that left hand, putting Lapierre down again. In the end, he landed 129 power punches. 54% of his power punches landed. The final total looked like this, 168 out of 406. You know, Pedraza, I believe, put on a great show tonight. You know, he displayed great boxing skills and ability. When he's motivated, he's a problem. Trust me, he is a problem. He's a problem for anybody in the 140 pound weight class. Very consistent performance, workmanlike, showed, showed glimpses of, an, of, his, of his old self tonight. The guy who won two belts in two different weight classes, he's moving on, hopefully to bigger and better things. And Mick Lapierre, much respect to him. I had respect for him based on him being on the front lines of the COVID-19 fight in New York and trying to fight and, you know, just continue his boxing career. But I have even more respect for him tonight. He took some punishment. He never quit. He battled back. He came up short, but much respect to Mick Lapierre. Let's go to Mark Chino with the were supposed to be a judges scores. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the MGM Grand, after 10 rounds, we go to the judges scorecards for the official decision. Tim Cheatham has the bout 100 to 88. Dave Moretti and Patricia Morse Jarman have it 99 89. For your winner by unanimous decision, Jose Sniper Pedraza. Dominated from start to finish, Louis Espada having lost his mom this week. You saw him.